When I look at what Virginie is doing at Chanel, it seems to me it's softer, it's more feminine. It doesn't move quite as fast as Carl's Chanel did, but maybe that's a good thing. She worked for Carl for so many years. She knew him better than anybody, probably, but she isn't trying to be Carl. And I think that's so important to remember that she's taken his legacy and she's taken Chanel and she's making it absolutely her own. It's between yesterday and tomorrow. We are in between. And the good thing is that fashion can go from the old world to the new world. We have to adapt with the change of times. And change is the most interesting thing. Because, you know, the past of Chanel, when I took over, it was forgotten. And now I have to push it where the future goes. Carl made Chanel both a house that endures, but a house that changes. Whilst Carl left this tremendous vacuum in the world of fashion and style, the establishment at Chanel handled everything with this sense of really a seamless transition. Like Carl before her, obviously Virginie is immersed in the history of Chanel and the life that Gabrielle led and how much of her personal life influenced her design. Gabrielle Chanel opened her first shop on the Rue Combon in 1910. She parlayed her very considerable taste into making these cardigans that are unfitted and they just have a tie at the waist and loose-fitting fluid skirt that's cut scandalously short above the ankle. And these are clothes that you can kind of work and function in. By the early 20s, she has built up a couture house that really has a very, very strong point of view. Its hemline, a rigid two inches below the knee, a gaily colored velvet print suit with matching handbag, has the style which for many women has become almost a classic uniform. Chanel was very unfiltered and didn't hold back her opinions. And I can imagine she would have had a lot to say about Carl. <laughs> Everybody designs for an idea of a woman. Other women can identify with it, like it or not like it, buy it or not buy it. Chanel was good for Carl, but of course Carl was extraordinary for Chanel. He just had this unbelievable instinct for absorbing the zeitgeist. When I came here as a kid, I expected Chanel to be really serious and stuffy. And then as soon as I came, it was like this fun family atmosphere. Carl and everyone made me feel very welcome. He embraced everything. He followed culture, he followed film, he followed literature. He loved society, he loved grand houses. But he also always was watching what was happening on the street. And he always would say to me, let's go for a walk. And we would walk on the street and just see what people were wearing. You know, he was Superman. He was just an extraordinary, extraordinary megaphone for fashion. When we heard about Carl passing away, we, we were in shock. It felt like a giant had left the stage. He was so witty and sharp and funny and open. I mean, he was the first to bring the street to the catwalk and really, really influenced every part of fashion. He's irreplaceable. I mean, there just is no one else like him and I think for people that maybe don't know Carl or didn't know Carl as, as, as well as I did because I was so lucky to know him over so many years that there was a very vulnerable side to Carl and I just felt so privileged to be inside that circle. We genuinely had a friendship I certainly miss our conversations, I miss his honesty, I miss his exuberance, I miss his wicked sense of humor, his love of gossip. I miss everything about him, really. It was um, not a relationship that I'll ever be able to replace. With him passing, it's a beautiful legacy that he leaves, which lives side by side with Gabrielle Chanel's legacy.
I always remember sitting in on an interview that one of our first ladies was giving, and they were asking which first ladies that came before you most influenced you. And she said back, slightly annoyed, I think I'll just be myself. And I think that's Virginie's approach too. For Virginie, taking on the legacy of Carl and of Gabrielle Chanel was in a way easy. Everything is easy here. And hard at the same time. I'm always uh, worried about maybe is it going to be okay or good? <laughs> more and more we, we can see it that she's infusing her own style and ideas into the collections. She always has that little extra something that makes it more rock and roll and stylish. She always has a, an edge to her clothes. It's really beautiful without trying hard at all. It just like happens to be incredibly elegant. Like Chanel, she thinks about clothes that she would want and that would enable her to look great while living her life. She's cool and not precious about it. I think that's what I like about Virginie. I do my best, but if it doesn't work, uh, it's moche, I don't know, but... Virginie is a very private person. You have a life in the country as well? Yes. And that's a simple life? Also. <laughs> and she has a kind of cool exterior because she has a mystique, which I respect. You're kind of like a sphinx of fashion. Ah bon? Yes, I think so. <laughs> I like simple things, you know. I like to, to even to, lo to look at things or to, that I know, but after one year, you see them a, in a different way. She wants to communicate through her work. I find it so modern, I find it so now, to put into the light just the process of creation and the teamwork. She is not in it for the fame, for the attention. She just wants people to feel good in what she makes. She loves to go into deep conversations. She loves to talk. She loves to listen to you, to watch you move, and, and that takes time. What she also learned from working with Carl is this idea of, you know, it's only fashion. It's not brain surgery. Not saving people. You know, we don't save lives, so let's have fun and tomorrow we make something else. It's very playful when we work with Chanel. There's almost a telepathic connection with Virginie. Like we kind of sense what the feeling would be for a collection. She's much less fashion reference. We would go like, oh, remember this movie from the 70s? And, you know, when she crosses the street, she's wearing this coat with that bag and whatever. And, and for her, it's much more, no, remember that feeling when you would go to a club and you're wearing this amazing new coat and it's super hot in the club, but you don't want to take your coat off. You just keep it on and dance the whole evening. When we're working on the fittings, together, the girl that designs the fabrics has as much input as Virginie, as the girl that uh, that does the jewelry or the bags. They know when it's a starting point and they, they understand what I want. want or... It's a real team of all these amazing women that are just doing it together. I was thrilled when Virginie asked me to come be a part of it. For me, the couture is such an incredible tradition that, that I'm happy that still exists and nothing else is like that. And it was fun to see Virginie's references. There were images of Gabrielle Chanel at balls and costumes. We were in the studio a few days before the show and and the dress is, is you know, a fraction of it's made and you just think, how are they gonna put this all together by Tuesday? It's pretty incredible. I'm very excited to have a tour. Okay, we'll let you work. Okay. Well done. That's this one.
I'm inclined to think that in the work of Virginie, Chanel would see it a, perhaps a slightly closer reflection to her own principles of making woman-friendly clothes that you can move and live and exist in. I think she would certainly see a shared mindset of a woman designing for women. I'm doing things with heart and it's the only important thing for me. Uh.